Silk is the ultimate luxury fiber. It's strong, it's lustrous, it's beautiful, and it also has a reputation for being kind of a pain in the butt to sew. If you've ever struggled to sew with silk, or if you're just afraid to dive into it, don't worry, with the right tools and the right techniques, it's a breeze. In this video, Haley's gonna walk you through everything you need to know about sewing with silk. She'll teach you about the different types of silk, how to match the type of silk to the pattern, how to sew with it, and how to care for it. All right, so I'll hand it over to Haley. Silk is a really misunderstood fabric, and that's because silk is actually not a fabric. It is a fiber that can be made into a bunch of different fabrics. Generally, silk tends to be quite lightweight. However, there's a really big range of body that silk can have. Some silks are going to be more drapey, while other silks are going to have more body. And these are the two elements that you're gonna take into consideration when you're matching your silk to your project. More drapey silks are gonna be more suited to projects that are flowing or have draped elements, while silks with more body are gonna do a great job of emphasizing a silhouette because they are going to sit away from the body rather than collapse against it. Let's go over the most common types of silk in both of those categories. Chiffon. Chiffon is a lightweight, plain weave, sheer fabric. Georgette. Georgette is a semi-sheer fabric with a crepe-like texture. Satin. Satin is known for its shiny and lustrous finish. This finish is achieved by using a satin weave where the warp threads, that's the length of grain threads, float over a number of weft threads. The weight can really vary from light to midweight. Charmousse. Charmousse is also created using a satin weave. The main difference is that charmousse is a little bit lighter and drapier. Crepe de chine. Crepe de chine is a semi-sheer plain weave silk with a very, very subtle crepe texture. Crepe. Crepe is known for its crimped texture. This fabric is typically opaque and depending on the weight of the fabric, crepe can have more or less body. Dupioni. Dupioni is a plain weave silk that utilizes slubby yarn. This gives dupioni a textured surface. Organza. Silk organza is a plain weave silk with a lot of body and a bouncy hand. Taffeta. Taffeta is an opaque but very densely woven silk that has a really crisp hand. Raw silk slash silk noir. Raw silk is an unrefined silk that's been spun into yarn before any finishing process is done. This gives it a coarser texture. Drapey silks are going to be really flowy and they are going to collapse against the body. Silks with more body are going to add structure to your garment and help to enhance the silhouette of them. Let's talk about how to pre-wash and care for your silk fabrics. Most manufactured silk garments are going to be dry clean only, and you can certainly dry clean your home sewn silk projects, but I tend to gravitate towards pre-washing my silks so that I can then launder them at home. Keep in mind that given the range of silks available, all silks are going to react a little bit differently to pre-washing, so make sure that you cut off a small piece of your fabric and do a test run before washing your whole yardage. That being said, silk does have a tendency to shrink, so keep that in mind when you're buying your silk, so you make sure that you buy enough, and also when you're pre-washing and caring for your silk garments. To pre-treat your silk, you are going to wanna to give it a soak in lukewarm water. Lukewarm water is going to be between body temperature and room temperature. You can also add a little bit of distilled white vinegar or a gentle detergent if you like, something like wool light would work well. Gently, and I mean super, super gently, agitate your fabric. Then you're gonna to wanna to give it a gentle rinse and gently squeeze it dry. No ringing allowed, not allowed. Next, you're gonna to wanna to take your yardage and lay it out on a towel. Then roll it up in your towel and give it a little gentle squeeze just to get out any excess water. Then you can lay flat to dry. To release any wrinkles that were left from washing your silk, you can go ahead and give it a very gentle press. It can be helpful to press your fabric while it's still very slightly damp. Just be sure to use a low iron setting and a press cloth for this. Next, let's talk about cutting your silk project. Silk has a tendency to be super slippery, so there's a few things that you can do to help with this. 
First, you can cut single layer. This will help avoid any slip that happens. It can also be really helpful to make sure you're using a very sharp blade, whether that is a fresh rotary blade or using the sharpest shears in your stash. You can also pre-treat your fabric with spray stabilizer. This is a really cool trick to use. However, when you spray stabilize your fabric, you are going to have to wash it to remove that spray stabilizer. So before you use spray stabilizer, you must pre-treat your fabric to get any shrink out. You spray it, you cut it, you sew it, and then you have to wash it again. And because of that, you wanna make sure that your silk can handle the pre-washing and washing process very well. If you choose to spray stabilize, it is a very easy process. Just lay your pre-washed fabric out on a flat surface, then give it a spray. You'll wanna to refer to the package instructions on your spray stabilizer. Let it dry completely, and then you can cut and sew as normal. And the spray stabilizer is going to give your fabric an almost papery-like quality and make it really easy to sew. Let's talk about pins and needles. Using small, lightweight pins and needles will help to keep from damaging your silk fabric. You can buy silk pins to help you with the construction and the cutting process. And when it comes to your needles, you're gonna to wanna to use something very small and delicate. I like using a Microtex needle in a 60 or a 70 size, kind of depending on the weight of my silk. For constructing your garment, you can also opt for a slightly shorter stitch. For medium weight silks, I like to use anything from a 2.5 to a two millimeter stitch. And for the most lightweight silks, you can use anything between a two and a 1.5 millimeter. To combat any tension issues you may have when you're sewing with silk, you can apply very gentle tension behind your presser foot and in front of your presser foot as you gently guide your fabric through your machine. And if you are dealing with your fabric creeping below your throat plate and jamming your machine, put a piece of tissue paper underneath your fabric to help deal with that issue. Let's talk about pressing silk. Silk is very delicate, and because of this, you're gonna wanna use a low iron setting. It's also super important to use a press cloth when you are working with silk, because you do not wanna scorch or leave any marks on your silk fabric. You'll also wanna avoid using a back and forth ironing motion when you are pressing your silk. This can warp and distort your fabric. Make sure you're using a nice up and down motion when pressing your silk instead. When it comes to finishing your silk garments, French seams are really an ideal choice for most silk garments. French seams give you a nice clean enclosed seam and also are great for things that are sheer or semi-sheer. If you're working with a silk garment that you are lining, you can use pinking shears. This is a nice lightweight finish that helps to combat any unraveling that may happen with silk. And a serger can also be used, but this is definitely a more casual finish. You'll wanna make sure that you're switching to a three thread stitch because you'll wanna keep that finish really lightweight and undetectable. On lightweight silks, a baby hem or a rolled hem is a beautiful finish. On heavier silks, you can use a deeper hem and hand stitch the hem instead. I hope you found this video helpful and you can use some of these tips and tricks in your next silk sewing project. We are working on a couple more of these fabric guide videos, so be sure to let us know in the comments below what fabrics you wanna see covered. I'll see you next time and happy sewing.